Hey, what's up everyone? I've got a good one for you today, and this has everything to do with customizing the login and registration experience for my listing. In this video, we're gonna look at separating out the login and registration pages. So currently by default with my listing, you have one page for login and registration, which there are some limitations with that, and uh, we'll talk about those. If this sounds familiar, that's because I have done a video and what I call, I'll refer to as a mega guide in this particular area um, of customizing a my listing website. What's going to be different about this is what I call, it's what I call the light version of this. So this is going to be a 100% free approach, whereas the mega guide has more feet covered more features, uh, which come with a cost. So. There's the default way of doing things with my listing. There's the mega way that I've already covered. And then this is going to sit in like that right in that middle area uh, for those that want to do a little bit more than what my listing offers, but don't want to go um, whole hog and go with the paid features, okay, of, of actions pack for Elementor, which was what was used in that mega guide, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, before we get to the resources and setting this up, uh, I wanna show you a quick little background of what I'm talking about here. Um, so if you look at the default, uh, one of the demos from my listing, so uh, main.mylistingtheme.com, and then you click on sign in or register, doesn't matter which, you're gonna get a page that looks like this, and you'll see here, based on the URL, it's the my account endpoint for WooCommerce, and then you've got the sign in and register tab. But whether you click sign in or register, it's all the same page, just different tabs. Okay, so that's what you get by default. Um, what I did with the mega guide is this. So we have on the Canvas starter site, we see that we have a URL of login, and then this is fully customizable to do anything you want with it, with Elementor, with the WordPress block editor, like whatever you want to do, okay? Uh, and the same goes for the registration page. So these are separated out, okay? Uh, and I did the same thing for fit. So here's the login page. Here is the register page. One thing you'll notice when you look at these is the social media here. So you've got some options for so different social media logins, all right? You're gonna have that same option here because this social media option on the, in the mega guide, that was the one of the free portions of that particular uh, setup. Okay, all right, let's close those down. Uh, do I wanna leave this one up? Yeah, we'll go ahead and leave this one up. I think we're gonna maybe reference this, okay? Um, so let's look at the, the new guide for this light version. So if you go to the My Listing Club website and just go to resources, it's the last guide that I published because I just completed it today. We're gonna go ahead and go into that, completely customize the My Listing login registration experience for free. If we scroll down, we're gonna see a mention of the other guide. This is the mega guide, okay? So quite a bit more in this one, a bit more features. Like I said, it's some, some paid features because of the actions, the requirement of actions pack for Elementor Gold, okay? So I'll let you guys look through that if you haven't already. That is one of the most popular guides and videos that I've ever done. So it's, people are definitely interested in wanting to have that. But there's also been some people that, hey, can you do something similar that's uh, not so complex? Not that that other one's complex, but that some people just need a little bit less and it's not necessarily about the money, it's just they wanted to do a little bit less. Okay, so again, when I say light, I'm referring to removing the reliance of the actions pack for Elementor plugin, which is a paid solution. Okay, so why do this? The, as I've shown you, the My Listing WordPress theme allows you to set a custom login register page, background, and configure social media logins. Still, you are limited in what you can do in terms of the design and functionality. You are at the mercy of the My Listing developers or a developer that you hire, or maybe you're a developer, um, and you're limited to what the Google and Facebook social logins give you. Let's look at the social logins as just one example. My listing pulls in this functionality from Google and Facebook using iframes, okay? So if you go back to this uh, default my listing implementation and you were to inspect these social logins, they come in from an iframe, 
Uh, and you know that just, just from looking at the code, okay? So there's very limited things that you can do to manipulate these, these buttons and, and the functionality behind them, okay? So uh, things like things like the, the text, the but styling the buttons, the URL redirection. Uh, once you click on one of those buttons, the overall styling, etc. Additionally, we are limited to only Google and Facebook at, at this time with the my listing theme. So for some businesses, that's not enough. They need, or they just need completely different ones. Like Facebook and Google doesn't work for them. They need like LinkedIn or Twitter X, whatever. Okay. So what you will gain with this guide, you can easily take the My Listing login registration experience to a new level, unlocking your creativity, improving the onboarding experience, and more. You will have the full power of Elementor to completely customize the design and functionality of My Listing's login and registration experience, including social logins, unique pages for login, registration, and more. You, you can also do this with a WordPress block editor if that's something that you want to do. You can fully customize the social login experience by adding more login providers, LinkedIn, Twitter, X, etc., using custom buttons, applying overall custom styling that you want to have, and more. Okay, just a couple of notes here. Um, mostly good, just one bad one, and it's a minor bad one. Elementor Pro is optional in this case, whereas with the other Mega Guide, it was required. Okay, so you only need Elementor Pro in this case if you want to do a lot of bells and whistles or the, do the features that Elementor Pro provides. WP Social Login is a free plugin. That is how we're doing the social login. You can, you can do whatever social login plugin you wanna use, okay? Uh, user role switching is available in this version, whereas with the Mega Guide, the Mega Options, uh, with Actions Pack with Elementor, it wasn't possible, it's not possible, unless you throw some custom development at it, okay? So that's another cool thing. That was one of the things um, that got me thinking about doing this version of the guide was um, some people really wanted to use user roles and uh, I wanted to be able to give that to them. So that's partially what this is for. Uh, the only bad news in air quotes is there will be some lost functionality due to removing the actions pack for Elementor plugin. So let's look at what that is. Lost functionality. When removing the actions pack for Elementor plugin, we must consider some of the features we'll lose. And I've listed those below. These are some of the major ones. Um, action pack, actions pack does a lot of stuff. Okay, so these are just some of the main ones that came to mind. Custom login registration forms. You won't have the ability to create these custom forms. Um, we'll, we're just gonna use what my listing gives us by default, which they're pretty nice out of the box. So we're, we should be okay there. User verification. Actions Pack has a user verification system. Um, so if, you, if that's important to you, there are nice plugins out there, free plugins even, that allow you to do that. Just look for the ones that are like uh, Woo, support WooCommerce. Okay, uh, registration custom messages. That's another feature of Actions Pack. If someone logged in, registered, you could, or whatever else, did some other things, you could send them custom messages. Uh, so now you're, you would need a separate plugin or code snippet um, to do any of that kind of custom login registration messages to your users and customers. Okay, some of these are probably not deal breakers, but they, you know, they ha it has to be mentioned there. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in, and let's 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 see what we have here. So I'm going to show you really quick the front end of this test site I created, and if we click the sign in or register buttons up here at the top. This is what we're gonna get by default with my listing out of the box. We don't get that background image that you saw from the my listing demo. Uh, you have to set that up, which is a 10 second change, super easy. But I just wanted to show you what you would get by default before we've done anything here. Okay, so first up, we need a code snippet uh, to add to our login page that's gonna give us a short code that we need to embed to unlock some things, okay? So I've linked to that in the guide. I'm gonna jump over into WP Codebox. This is how I add and manage all code snippets for all of my websites and my client websites. You can do whatever works best for you, uh, but I highly recommend WP Codebox. So I'm just gonna to toggle on this snippet. Okay, let's go back here to our instructions. Create a page named Login, edit the page with Elementor, add the short code Elementor widget to the page, and then add this short code that I'm giving you right here in the guide to that page, okay? So let's go edit the Login page. Let's drop in the shortcode widget. 
Let's drop our short code into the widget and update our page. And then the final instructions here for this, you know, design this however you want. We'll get into that here in a second. Okay, let's go set up our register page. So another code snippet, which I've already added to WP Codebox. We're gonna go turn this on. Okay, and same instructions, except for the page is named register, but we have a little bit different short code here. So let's go to our register page, edit with Elementor. Add the short code, widget, add our short code to, to the widget, update, boom. So both of those pages are good to go as far as uh, the framework setting it up. Okay, um, the last bit here in this section is a redirect after logout. If we do nothing here, what's going to happen when you log out of these custom login and register pages, they're going to drop you right back into the default login register page for my listing, and that could confuse people. Um, up to you if you want to go that route, but I think it's going to confuse people. So we have another code snippet, redirect after logout. So we just enable that. The key line here is this one right here. You're just going to put your own lock, custom login URL in here, uh, which I have already done. Okay. All right, moving on down. I showed you before what happened before. Uh, so this is what we had. Now let me go ahead and refresh just to show you that nothing has changed. If I click sign in here, we still get the same page. Register, we still get the same page. That's because we need to redirect these two URLs, the sign in and the register URLs from the menu, the user area menu, to our custom pages, okay? For that, I recommend you use FileZilla or an, a, an app that's similar to Files, FileZilla that allows you to connect to your server using FTP, SFTP, uh, this allows you to manipulate your server files in case something goes wrong, then you can still get to get to your website if you lock yourself out. You can also use a free file manager plugin, but if something goes wrong, you're going to lock yourself out of your website. But So just keep that in mind. Okay, so we're going to go, I'm connected here to, to this test website. We're going to browse the WP content, themes, my listing. We're gonna go into the includes folder and the utils folder. We're gonna copy the utils file to our desktop. It looks like I may already have one here. Oh no, there we go, I refreshed it. We're gonna copy this utils.php file to our desktop, okay? We're then gonna to browse to the child theme, to that same location. My listing child, oh, there's that location doesn't exist, okay? So that means we need to create it to create that one-to-one -one directory match with our parent theme, okay? So that was includes slash utils. So that gives us that directory hierarchy. There we go. Let's browse into those folders. Okay. Now let's drag that utils file into that new folder. At this stage, we have not made any changes to the utils.php file. We now have a direct one-to-one -one match with the parent theme and the child theme. So we've changed nothing. As soon as we make one change to this Within this file, we've now changed the game specifically for this one file and this one file only, okay? So let's go ahead and edit this. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, let me, let me change something really here. I need to associate my text editor here. So let's go to, There we go, let's go with that, see what that gives us. All right, so now let's edit that file. Not what I wanted to use, but you know, we can get, we can get by with this. I like to use Visual Studio Code. All right, going back to, which is also free by the way, it's, it's awesome. So I give you exactly what you need to change here in the instructions, super easy instructions. What we're looking for is to change lines 30, 343 to 349, and I give you the exact snippet here to replace those lines with. So I'm just gonna do a search instead for the word register. And let's do it one more time. See, it's not as pretty. If you look at this in, in um, like Visual Studio Code, it's gonna look a lot better for you. I don't know what's going on here. It's hard to read this. There's no formatting. Here we go. All right, so this is what I wanna replace. All right, that looks good. Um, but what we need to do still is we need to add our custom 
um, URLs, which I, you know, it's, again, it's all documented in here. So I'm gonna grab my URL from my, from my site here, the domain, I should say. I'm gonna come back in here into this utils folder file, I should say, and I'm gonna just replace domain.com with this domain. Okay, just double check my work here, that looks good. So I'm gonna save the file, close it, and then FileZilla is gonna ask me to upload this to my server, and I'm gonna say yes. Okay, at this point we've made all the adjustments we need to make to the file, all is good there. We've satisfied this section right here, and let's test that out to make sure that's true. Refresh, refresh our site. Now, when I click on sign in, we see that it takes us to our custom login page. Let's go to register. Boom, takes us to our custom register page. But what we're seeing here is that the styling is not, not great. So, you know, we obviously want to change that, but that's the beauty of what we're doing here. We now have the freedom to design this any way we want. There's a little bit of styling that you see here. Um, and that is coming in, if you do nothing, this, you know, like if you don't add this CSS I give you right here in this section, it's not gonna look good at all. So I give you a little bit of CSS to make this look cohesive with um, the default my listing look. Okay, this will all make sense here in a second, but I give you this code for free, just you can just grab it and drop it in to wherever you manage your CSS. Okay, um, real quick, some optional functionality using code snippets. If you wanna redirect people after they log in, you can do that, I give you the link for that snippet. If you wanna redirect people based on their particular role, here, I give you a snippet for that. If you want to redirect after they register, so after they go to the register page, here is the link to that snippet, okay? And then the last thing I like to say here is how to easily undo all of this if you later change your mind. Really simple. Remove the custom login and register pages. Remove the custom code snippets. Remove the social login plugin. And then using SFTP, FTP application like FileZilla or a file manager plugin, just remove... Um, the custom utils directory uh, there, or just the file if you wanna keep the directory intact. It's not gonna hurt anything to leave that directory structure in place. You just wanna make sure that that file is, is removed there, okay? All right, so that is pretty much it with the guide. We're just, at this point, we're, it's just down to, to styling uh, these widgets, okay? Or, sorry, these pages. All right, we'll go ahead and leave this one up, uh, the default my list one up. So there's a lot of ways we can go about this. You can download a template from Elementor um, or import one. You can import one from the club. You can build everything from scratch from here on out if you want. Uh, if you feel like installing Elementor Pro and to get access to certain things, you can do that, but you don't have to. So what I'm gonna show you here is we're gonna import one of the, we're gonna import the Canvas login page and also the Canvas register page, okay? All right, so I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna click on this folder icon right here. I'm gonna to go to my templates. I've already imp imported these templates. I've downloaded them from the club website, imported them into my site. Now I'm gonna import them into the page. So we're gonna do the canvas login page light mode. Click insert, apply. And that's gonna drop that right in there for us. And the great thing about it is it's not gonna get rid of that short code, okay? So what we're gonna do here, because we've got some holdovers from the pro components from the Canvas site, we're simply just gonna delete the pro components. Being sure not to delete this one right here. This may look funny, but don't worry, you're not gonna see this on the front end. This is for the social login. So just don't touch that, leave that there, delete everything else here, all right? We were then, we're gonna grab this short code widget that we added earlier up here at the top. We're just gonna grab that, copy it, paste it right here, and we're gonna drop it right above the, move it right above that logout button there, okay? And then I'm gonna go up here at the top and I'm just gonna remove that short code from up there. Um, I actually wanna remove that whole thing up there at the top. So I'm gonna right click, go to Navigator, and I'm gonna delete that top container. There we go. So that gets us a one-to-one -one match to what that template structure looked like before, okay? Uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add an image over here to the right. And if you followed along with my Canvas videos at all or documentation, the build notes, you'll know that I give you the exact dimensions of this image to put in here, okay? I've already got an image downloaded, so I'm gonna click on the container here. 
and I'm going to go to style and I'm going to upload a custom image. That's a JPEG. I definitely should have optimized that before I brought it up, <laughs> but I didn't. Um, anyway, we'll pull that in. It's fine for the purposes of this video. It's all good. All right, so we've got that. It's, you know, that's looking really cool. Uh, let's just see what we've got. Let's click update here. Let's check the front end. There we go. I mean, it's starting to, starting to look very much like the default My Listing Login page. But now we've got the functionality here of the social logins. Uh, that's really cool. Yeah, this looked really, really good. Uh, another thing I want to point out that you can do, a little pro tip, is you can use Local Translate, which I've done. And the only thing that I've done with Local Translate, another free plugin, is I've just changed the wording here a little bit. And the only thing I did is I just capitalized what I, the words that I wanted to capitalize. Okay, so I think I ended up capitalizing the E in email here and I capitalized the lost your password text. That's all I did. Uh, so, but if you wanna change the text even more than that, you can actually literally change the, the wording itself like completely. Totally up to you what you wanna do there. But I wanted to point out that I did do that. Um, as far as the social login buttons, if we go to WP Social and go to social login. So this is where you would configure your providers. I've got Facebook. Google and Twitter X enabled just for the sake of this video. And then you can go to the style settings and you can choose whatever style, one of these styles. And then um, you can also use CSS if you want to make it match your own branding, which I've done. I think I showed you that on Canvas. Let me show you that again. See how this matches the branding. So this is custom CSS, which is also available from the club if you want that. Okay, but this is, I just wanted to point out, this is the area where you do all the things related to your social login. We're not gonna get into that in this video. It's, a lot of this is just personal preference, but it's self-explanatory as well. There's just click, click buttons mainly. Okay, uh, so let's bring this page back. And I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, unless you wanna change the color of the required um, little asterisk icon looking things there. Um, I mean, that's really it. Uh, there's not a whole lot more that we need to do there. Okay, let's look at the register page. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna click this folder icon, go to my templates. We're gonna import the canvas register page light mode. Click insert, click apply. Again, delete those pro components that are held over. Uh, I did have a heading in there. That's cool. You know what? Let's leave that. We're going to, we'll, we'll address that actually. Okay. So I'm going to copy this. Um, I'm going to copy that short code there. And then again, delete this top container. There we go. So now we have like a, you know, everything is just looks per good. Everything's aligned. Great. Let's go ahead and add that background image in there. All right, that looks good. Now there's one thing from Canvas that, and Fit that I forgot, and it's, it's the text is so light here, I forgot all about it. Um, but what you can do here is I've got a heading. So let's just say we click on this dynamic tags icon. Oh, it's pro, damn. Okay, we're just gonna put the site name in here. I'll just put, I'll just put my listing. And then you can style this, obviously, however it is that you want. Uh, hopefully you've got your global colors. We're gonna pretend you have your global colors set up. But what I did for Fit and Canvas is I used the dynamic tags here to automatically insert the site name. But up to you what you want to do there. So that's pulled in. And another thing you can do is use this link option to dynamically pull. Ah, I don't have Pro. You can just put in your, your homepage here. So that when someone, if someone wants to click this heading, they can go back to your homepage. Anyway, that's a nice little feature. So I'll copy that. Um, Paste that here. There we go. Okay, so that is that. Let's look at the register page now on the front end. I'm actually, yeah, let's pull this over. So this is our login page now that we have that heading in there. And then, you know, maybe we go here and we align this to the left. 
Okay, let's do that. Let's align register this heading to the left. There we go. All right, let's see what we get now. There we go. That looks cool. All right, look at this before and now look at this. Pretty cool stuff, right? It, sky's the limit now, guys. I mean, you can do whatever you, I mean, whatever you want to, whatever you want to do here. Um, you could put some text here in the middle. You could do pop-ups. You could do ah, scrolling text. You could do, you, you can just let your mind run wild. Like you could do announcements in here. You could do a link, like a an icon grid that's like with pop-up. You know, like hover over uh, tool tips, um, things like just all kinds of things you can do. You can put your Put your logo here if you wanted. You know, drop in your logo right here. You know, whatever. I don't have any logo images, but you know, you get the idea. Can't really, where'd I put that? Maybe on the register page? Yeah, there we go. So that could be your logo. It could be whatever. I mean, this the sky is the limit now. Whereas before, you know, with the My Listing demo, or with the My Listing defaults, yeah, you can add a background image, which we've done. You get this forms over here, which, yeah, we've done. But you've just that easily and for free mimicked what My Listing is doing. But now you've, you've got the freedom. Uh, you've got these pages separated, which also gives you flexibility on redirects, uh, uh, assigning code snippets only to these specific pages rather than only having the option to assign them to one page. Uh, it's just there's so much that you can now do for very little effort uh, and for free. Uh, so that was the goal here. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video and you find it useful and I will catch you all in the next one. See ya.